Hey guys, welcome to Chief Pigskin's YouTube channel. You're about to watch a home clinic where we find one quality coach and he talks on one very specific subject. If you'd like to see more of these come your way, please like and subscribe below and check us out at clinic.chiefpigskin.com. Hey everybody, Nate Albaugh here, producer of Chief Pigskin, the online clinic, also a football coach at Unity High School in Tolono, Illinois, and excited, really excited to be alongside Charles Watkins here, who's the current defensive coordinator at Concordia University, Chicago. Charles has been, grew up on the East Coast in New Jersey, played wide receiver at Duke, part of Cutcliffe's first recruiting class, and went on to coach DBs at Coe College for some time and then ended up as a GA at Rutgers. And after being a GA as a wide receiver coach at Rutgers, got the call on opportunity to be defensive coordinator at Concordia University, Chicago. Finished up year one last year. You guys are prepping for year two. First of all, Coach, welcome. Thanks for joining us to talk a little defense today. Hey, thank you so much. I'm excited. I'm ready to talk ball. Well, I know you're a super excitable guy, and uh, I went to watch CUC practice last spring and get a little footage for Chief Pigskin, and right away, you know, it was like we're out of defense, and you're, your guy's got a pick, and you're like sprinting back the pick six with the whole team. <laughs> um, and you're, you know, went, went offense versus some defense time, and your guys were wreaking some havoc, and of course, the, o, the OC or the O-line coach was kind of, you're driving them nuts. Um, so, you know, I just love your energy and I immediately kind of stole, um, uh, some of your energy and excitement running back pick six is right back to my own team. So, it. um, you're a super excitable guy and fun to be around. And, and we had a great conversation last year that I remember now, I think we put it on yes. YouTube and we, we were arguing, I can't remember what we were arguing, we were arguing something uh, about pistol. <laughs> you do it out of uh, up tempo or, yeah, or a huddle. That I should have been no <laughs> huddle with my wing team. We had a great conversation. <laughs> so super fun guy. Great. Excited to have you. Today we're talking uh, linebacker drops. So we're going to let coach take it where he wants. And so it's not interview format. I just turn it over to coach. He'll share his screen and do a little mini clinic for you guys on linebacker drops. I'm excited about this because... Uh, linebacker drops are one of those things where, in my opinion, you, you can really be sold by the last guy you talk to. I mean, I've done spot drops. I've done man drops. Um, we're current, we currently do more of a spot drop team in the, the team I coach now. Um, but when I was coordinating defense last, we most recently were man drops um, okay. and matching things up. So I've done both. There's a lot that I like about both, so I'm excited to see what you guys are doing out of your 425 at Concordia, uh, and excited to turn it over to you. So, without further ado, Coach, I'm going to turn it over to you. Take it away, and uh, we'll hit, I'm going to hit you with some Q and A after you're done. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks for that uh, tremendous introduction. Uh, I'm glad to see that the uh, energy was contagious. That's why I do it. I try to impact our players as much as we can. Uh, but thank you for that. And uh, once we get everything rolling, I'd love to have you back out there uh, for, for spring ball. Um, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and share uh, my PowerPoint here. Um, so here, here we go. So the, the biggest thing with uh, your linebackers drop, like you said, some people, they uh, want to spot drop. Some want to match patterns. Um, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I think whatever you want to do with your defense, you just got to believe it. You got to really believe it. You got to uh, practice it. You got to get repetition at it. You got to get your players to believe that it's going to work. Uh, the biggest thing that I like, uh, and reason why we're a pattern match defense, uh, is it eliminates the space. So as a receiver, uh, when we ran a curl route, I knew when teams were a spot drop team, I knew that I could go find a window. That's a big offensive term. Hey, in this curl route, find that window. The linebacker's going to drop to this spot, try to get inside of him. So what we do, what I teach my linebackers is, hey, we want to eliminate that space. And the biggest thing I tell them, because a lot of the guys, they can play basketball, and I tell them like a 2-3 reference. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big 2-3 uh, uh, guy. Uh, when Syracuse, I think they're the best at it. Uh, Coach Cut recently had his team play a lot of 2-3 when they won their last national championship. And at times, that 2-3 could kind of look like man. It can look like man coverage, and that's something that our defense allows us to. When we play one high, teams don't know if we're in man or if we're in zone because of the way we're dropping. Uh, so we'll pattern match everything with our linebackers. And with us being a 4-2-5, the hybrid, 
you'll see me talk about him a lot, um, our Mike and our Will linebackers too. You'll kind of see they're in the box and when they drop out, how they're dropping out. Um, we have a rule where we say stay out of the no cover zone. Uh, I'm a big guy. I tell them, hey, do not chase the cheese. Uh, that'd be a lot of offense like to throw something short so you can bite under it so you can throw it over your head. So we have a no cover zone rule. Uh, that's from the line of scrimmage to four yards deep. So in this film, you'll see a lot of players, they won't chase anything under four yards. They'll pass it. We yell in and in so that way we're aware of it. We can see it in our peripheral, but we also want to try to match patterns the best way we can. Um, and some of the drills that I like to do when, uh, when we get into our individual drill, but also when we get into our group uh, drill as well, is uh, three, three huge components that I think if you are going to be a match defense, uh, you have to be able to rep it. You can't just say, hey, drop, and then expect those guys know how to pattern match. You have to work that every day. I'm a big believer you got to take it from the classroom. You got to take it through walkthrough. You got to take it to Indy, you got to take it to group, and then you take it to team. So about time the players are live with the offense, they have seen it five times. I'm a big believer in that. Everything we do, those will be the five ways we'll see it. Regardless, we're playing man, playing zone, bringing pressure. We have to work on it five times if I'm going to ask these guys to go out there and they can show me that they really understand it. I believe that's the best way uh, is repetition repetition and and every player you have learners different too some players are a visual learner some of them vocal uh some of them just have to do it so that's why i like to have those different uh opponents uh with how we do it so first thing is, is zone dropping so uh, we'll do a lot of hook shuffle and lead shoulder and what i mean by that is uh we won't ever cross over and run we won't ever kind of turn our eyes away from the quarterback when we're zone dropping, we're kind of almost peripheral. We kind of got our eyes on the quarterback a little bit. We also try to match a route, too. Uh, we're trying to match and see. And I'll go more detail how we're matching it. So we'll always we'll work that. We'll work our shuffle, staying square, reading it. Because uh, you got to read, pass, and run. I'm a big believer in you got to make these drills realistic. A lot of guys out here do drills that do not translate to the game. Every drill we do, I believe, is going to show up at a game at some point. And when it does – I'm going crazy. You, my guys hear about it. They say, oh, coach, that's this drill. That's the robot drill. That's the force drill. So that's the best compliment I can get. Is a lot of drills that we do, it shows up on game day. So I'll have my guys, we'll read, run, and pass. And how they're reading their keys is uh, for the Mike and Will, they're reading the center and our two guards here. You get a hi-hat, you know it's pass. Now your key goes to your pass key. Uh, and if he fires out, you know it's a run. Play action could be tough, and I'll show you how we'll go through that. And then my hybrid, he's reading the tackle through the quarterback. So you get a hi-hat from the uh, high half from the tackle. Now your quarterback, you're reading him now to see if it's a quick game or if it's five yards. So that way you kind of pattern match uh, what the number two receivers want to do. Um, robot drill is another read drill. Uh, we call it, you know, I want to make sure my guys are square here. We don't want to ever turn and run. We want to be in a position to where it's always a run. We can fit our keys. And if it's a pass, we can get straight to our lead shoulder here. And all this is, is we're reading uh, center, guard, guard, and I'll have a, a guy I'll play a tight end, and he's reading those guys. And next to you, he's either the, the lineman or either firing out for a run or they're giving him a hot hat with a play action. So he's going to redirect and try to find that tight end that's matching his area. So we'll do that a lot so our guys are getting realistic drills. Uh, and then force drill, we'll do this every Tuesday because I want to make sure uh, that we're hitting these elements. Not every team will do this, but I just want to make sure our guys, if they do come out here and do this, we are well equipped. So we'll do this Tuesday. So uh, we're going to match every uh, sprint out. Sorry, that should be sprint out there. Um, and how what this is, we play sprint out a little different uh, maybe than other teams. Uh, we're going to, we believe that half the field. So we got to match half the field here. Mike is going to put pressure on in our hybrid, depending on what the coverage is. He's going to be a flat player or he's going to be an intermediate player. Uh, those are two responsibilities right there for him. Uh, we'll work boat, uh, boot, we'll work boot there. Uh, rules if you get caught up, how to retrace, how to see the dragger coming across, if he's leaving, how to pass it on. Uh, and then I'm a big believer. You got to know, hey, first and second down, what are the teams?
team's biggest play actions, what they like to do on first and second down. So we're going to dedicate a period where we're working on our zone drops to how to pattern match their biggest first and second down play actions. Uh, we always want to step with our keys, reading our keys. Uh, eye control is very important for me. When we're zone dropping. I know a lot of people like to say, hey, uh, either got your eyes on your quarterback, you spot, or when you pattern match, you just look at your receiver. I believe in this day and age, we've got athletes that can do both. I think they can like see the peripheral with the quarterback, and you also can see the uh, see the route that the receiver is running. So we want to make sure that we have a good eye discipline, eye control, and then we also want to try to make contact with our eyes too. Uh, eyes first, and then the hands. So that's uh, some of the drills we'll do. Um, but getting right into uh, our cover three. So this right here is our cover three rules here. Uh, our corners would be deep third, free safeties middle third. Uh, and then you'll see, we, we, so we'll drop our overhang players. And, and this right here, our cover three, our strong safety and our hybrid uh, will be our overhang players. And so for I want my players to know, hey, uh, your role is two to one here. So we are a curl to flat player, but it's two to one. So if there's nothing in a flat, we won't ever cover green grass. Um, I hate covering green grass. It's a waste. That's why we'll always match a route here. Uh, so for example, if two's vertical and one's vertical here, if this if two's going vertical and one's going vertical, the hybrid will carry two, right? So he got his hands on two, eyes on one. Vertical, vertical, he's rerouting two. And then he's just leveling off 12 yards now, getting his eyes back around, seeing if anything's coming across or if the quarterback scrambles. Now, if he goes vertical and he runs a, a, a hitch now, he's through two on his way to one because he's a two-to-one player, all right? His job is to try to hold two as much as he can as the mic now is working out. Mike is a three-to-two player, all right? So where's three? Three's on the opposite side right now, so he knows he has no uh, – immediate threat right now so as he's working once he gets his read key he's now saying hey i get my eyes to two so if it was double slants we'll reroute get out the one he should have enough time to be able to see this slant here and on my next slide i'll kind of show you how it works uh but you're mike and your will they're your three to two players which is your hook to curl players so the wing players main job is to hold off that curl give enough time for those backers for the mike and the will to get there as they're on their route to, uh, or as they're on their way to the flat if there's immediate uh, threat to the flat. So as you see here in this diagram right here, this is the first one I was talking about. If uh, if, if two decides to uh, run a 10 yard in, we won't chase, we won't ever chase. This is where the two, three uh, rule comes in at. If he leaves my area, I'm just gonna pass it off. So almost, uh, I want a collision, I wanna wall him off so he doesn't come inside. He doesn't come inside at all. But if he does, we're passing it off saying in and in, and then I'm now looking to see uh, if anything comes my way or leveling off. And I tell my backers, we want to level off anywhere between 8 and 10 yards. Uh, that's kind of the realm where I want those guys. I don't want them too deep. Uh, just because they do throw that swing, we kind of got to be in a, a good spot to where we can rally, make a tackle maybe for a two- or three-yard game. Uh, you can see the next picture now. This is a great uh, example right here. The, I call it Ohio route. So out by number two, out by number two, and now number one, he either run a vertical or he can run a dig. In this case right here, he runs a dig now. So with our uh, our, our strong safety in this picture right here, this would be to the boundary now, he's a two-to-one player. So he's reading. So with two going out, he got to see what one does. Now one runs the dig. He's going to wait in that window. Now he's going to wait in that window, try to wall him off, give him enough time for that wheel to come out. And this happens really quick because it's in the boundary. So he's able to come here and then go straight down to the flat. You'll see a lot of film on it, how we'll do it. Uh, but his his whole main thing is not to stay, but get enough time to where the wheel can get out there where the quarterback just can't be uh, bang, bang. And then we'll rally to the flat. This right here is usually a five yard out. We'll rally to that. Uh, I know offensive guys, they hate. Uh, taking their time. They just want to go for the home run. So if they get five yards, uh, we'll take that. We'll give that as long as there's no home run plays. Uh, and then in the, the, the smash concept here, right here, you see the three by one uh, concept. Same thing for our hybrid here now. As he's going to see two, right? Now he got his hands on two, eyes on one. Hands on two, eyes on one. Now one's in a flat. So he got to get off his 45 and be able to T-plant, come down to that smash, and a corner should see it too now. So the corner comes off for the corner, passing it off. And remember I said the mic now is a three 
He's a three to two player, right? Well, now three is immediate threat right now. He see two went away, so he's standing right now on three. So this is where it kind of can look like it looks like it's a man covered, like our man's walled off on three. But if three was to go vertical, he would level off uh, right at ten yards there. Uh, so that's kind of how we'll kind of pattern match. And like I said, this is this is important. Day one, we struggle with it. By day five, our guys will understand. They were able to start matching patterns. This is why I'm a big believer when you work on your seven on seven, you're teaching the guys what the offense like to do too. Uh, they want to learn it. And the more they know, the more they understand, hey, we're not chasing the cheese. We know what's coming. We know their top plays out of three by one. We know their top plays out of two by two. Uh, it holds them accountable as well. Um, so a different variation we got here. Uh, I know a lot of people are asking, would you like to do the three by one? Uh, we got a lot of different variations I like to do. Uh, for the main, just a, a universal term, uh, cloud week, uh, we'll roll the safety over one, strong safety over one, free safety in the middle. Uh, but for our rules now, our hybrid, uh, our hybrid, he's, he's going to be apex or head up or two. We want to take away that slant, and we also want to try to be in a position to take that bubble too. But his rules are still the same. He's still going to be a two-to-one player. He's still two-to-one. Uh, and the reason I like – uh, uh, cloud week is because if you do your research, a lot of that, that, that strong side one to the field, he gets the ball 10% of the time. So I believe that we can be heavy on number two. We can reroute number two. And if one does run a, a hitch, they do run like a smash concept over there. He's able to rally to the flat. Huh? Oh, uh, and then we're able, we're able to rally to the flat. Uh, and now the mic now he's still pushing. He's still pushing three to two. He's still pushing three to two. Uh, you want to see now where's number three. And it's all, you know, route they can run like a drag concept. So three changes. And our guys are constantly looking for that. They're constantly looking. And your will now, he's dropping straight back. He's looking for two. So if that crosser comes across, he's a new number two now. Yelling in and in. So he's reading quarterback guys. That'll kind of help his leverage with the drop. Um, with that. So he's kind of looking and if one straw week now runs a slant, he's kind of in that window helping out the corner uh, to take that away. So that's one way we do it. Uh, another way is uh, Cloud Strong now. So team said he got a good slot player uh, and he's, you know, lined up to the, the, the trip to the strong side. He's number two or number three. Um, this is how we'll handle it. Our, 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 our hybrid here, uh, we call him our Hawk. Uh, he'll be the same thing, be head of a two, but now now he's he's a curl player now, so he's just sitting up in two. He's just a two because now he knows the corners in a flat now. So he's just our curl matching number two, trying to reroute two matching two. The mic is working straight to three. He's just your three player trying to take away that hook, trying to take away that seam. You get a drag, we'll pass that along. And now we know we're kind of vulnerable backside, so different variations. We can man that corner up man to man, or if he drops deep third, the will now knows hey. If I don't got a running back on my side, I can I can I can play heavy on that slant or in route. If I got a running back to my side, and there's different combinations they can do. Now I gotta see, I gotta kind of slow play it out here to see what kind of routes are coming their way. Um so we got another one is Sky. We won't spend too much time in here. Uh, but here we here we go. So the biggest one here, we tell our guys, uh, so this is actually what one of our zone pressures here. Uh our mic is working out to three. He's dropping over two. He's rotating middle. We're bringing pressure with our uh, hybrid off the edge now. So as he's working at three, you see it with his lead shoulder. He's looking, but now he knows, hey, two's about to become my new number three. I'm about to become my new number three. So I'm looking at two, ready to get my hands on. Sorry, ready to get my hands on three. Got my, ready to get my hands on three. Eyes on two, but he's about to become the new number two. So uh, you got to be able to react, transition here. Come, either we're going to get a tackle or we're going to get a, a pick six right here. All right, I'm going to show the ending. I told, I told Dudley I'm going to show the ending there. But this is huge right here for us. Our guys right here believing into it. So we're looking to pattern and match, looking to take it away, get an interception. See if we watch it here from the uh, back angle. There we go. So he's reading. He's able to play inside the box. He reads now. He sees gets a high hat. He gets a high hat by the guard and center. He sees that as a pass. So now he got to get out. You see the wheel backside. You see the wheel backside. So now he got the running back that way. So he's able now to stay square, right, ready to drop. This week, game plan week, we said we're just going to man him on the back here. 
we were going to man these two guys on the back because we knew this team loved to go to the uh to the trip side so we just manned up back side here mike does a real good job redirecting it's an interception all right here we go so this was huge right here so all week we told that will hey they like when they go formation to the boundary, we call it fib here, our fib check here. They love to go vertical. So we definitely now we I gave them a little more. Uh I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big player coacher. So I gave them a little more room. Say, hey, if you feel that vertical's coming and you have no threat, go ahead and chase it. So here we kind of knew this was early, early in the game for them. They're in kind of striking distance where they probably close to the 50. They want to take a shot. So we say, hey, Will, as you open up, as you open to your 45, look the pattern and match this. Go ahead, make a play. He still owe me one. He still owe me one. <laughs> he did a great job opening up. Now you just got to catch it. You see our mic here? Our mic's right here in the middle. He's looking to open up to see where's number three, where's number two. He's looking to redirect it. Same for a hybrid here. Looking to pattern match. Looking to pattern match. Looking to pattern match. So that's the biggest thing for our guys. And we know, like I said, offense, for some reason, those quarterbacks don't want to throw that check down. That's why we're able to do a lot of that stuff. And uh, I think Tom Brady's probably one of the best at it where, hey, you take that away, I'm going to take my check down. Um, but, you know, a lot of quarterbacks, they want to take that home run shot. Um, and we're, we're, we want to take that away. We want to invite. We can see it from this angle right here. So here we go. Watch number five right here. Five does a good job. Uh, lead shoulder. He sees pass key. Looking to match the route, right? I would like him to have still be able to see both. But he knows once he matches the pattern now, I got to get my eyes to the quarterback. I got to get my eyes to the quarterback. Once they declare what route they're running, I get my eyes to the quarterback. Now I just got to make the play. All right, so here we go. Uh, this week we went, we went, we went, we went, uh, cloud strong here. We went cloud strong. So this is why I say make it realistic. It's gotta be realistic. They gotta be, they gotta be realistic here. Our Mike, he sees run. He sees run. He sees the bubble now. He's able to redirect here. Hybrid now does a really, really good job. Really good job recognizing it and just making a play. Making a play right here. He's reading his key. That's why it says it's important to see the keys here. Okay. So we knew this team was a big, same thing. We knew they were a big uh, RPO team here. So we, we, we read our keys, see our drops here. Now, if he was to run a slant, the mic was able to take his drop and take that slant away, and he was full go to go ahead and play that bubble. So Dudley does a great job getting his tool, getting to his window. Our Will linebacker here does a great job seeing, hey, it's a it's a it's a pass, right? But I can help out on the three side because I'm and back side here. Good job with the interception here, reading their keys. Watch here at the bottom of the screen now. All right, so we got we still got three by one up top, three by one up top. Our hybrid is able to play the bubble here, right? But our Will does a really good job reading his keys. You see the mic now is ready to see what three does. Three goes away. He becomes a new number two. He becomes a new number three. Trying to see what he does. He away. So now we just level off. The Will here, he senses the screen. He senses that screen's coming. So there's no reason to drop. No reason to drop at all. He sniffs it out. He's able to make a play. See able to make a play. You can watch it here. But our Mike knows, hey, he's kind of tucked in. And we do a lot of different things with, with gap exchange with him. Whereas if he got to get out to number three, we can kind of make him be our C gap or our B gap player, where he's not just always our A gap player and have him get out to number three. So there's different ways we can do that. Uh, and then same thing for our Will here. We can make him an A gap player, B gap player, uh, different variations to get him to get to his pass drop. So he does a great job right there sniffing it out. Okay, so this was huge too. Another another RPO team here. Uh, this was actually the, the, the second player of the game, so this was huge to see. Uh, you watch here at the bottom of the screen. You can watch our hybrid here. Like I said, we won't ever chase the cheese. We won't ever chase the cheese. He's looking now. As you can see here, right, now they switch. So he becomes a new number two. 
He's the new number one. So now he's trying to pattern match. He's trying to pattern match number two. I like that he's in that window. And now the mic now, once he realizes an RPO, right, or play action, sorry, this one like was a play action right here, he's working to the new number three. There's no number, there's no threat, so he's just working to his hook, getting the area, makes a play. Makes a play. There are Will backside. He's looking to help out. If, if, if one was to run a slant or come inside, he's looking to help out with that. We man that backside there uh, to, to free him up. So he's kind of like our free player uh, in, in our pass right there. Watch it from the back here. Yep, play action here. He does a good job getting into that hook window. Real good job getting into that hook window. All right, so this is perfect right here. So it's two by two here. So uh, we're going to drop weak here with our strong safety. Remember what I said? He's a two-to-one player. He want to help out, give that will enough time to get out. He's dropping out in that 45. He should collision here, but it's a quick game, right? So now we got two guys in a window now to make a tackle, make a vice tackle right here. Will does a good job opening up. You can see the Will looking at the quarterback, reading his keys, peripheral, make a tackle. Second and nine, five-yard game, probably a three-yard game, you know, 34, 35. I can live with that, 30 medium. I like those down. See our hybrid up here, reroute. Does a real good job collisioning. Super important here, super important. So he knows I'm a curl to flat player, but I got to make sure I take this away before I can get out there. And now that – so he's collisioning here. Ball's already gone. But if he collision here, he's getting out there, and the mic now is pushing to where number two is. Watch it from the tight. Read our keys here. Get a hi-hat. I think the, the, the wheel here stays a little too long. Be able to get out there, make a tackle. Because you can see – the, the mic's already going. He reads his key. He's already looking. Another two by two set. This is perfect here. You, you see the strong safety at the bottom here. Collision. Now I think he he kind of is this is where he gets the gray area here. I love the reroute here. I love it. But now we got to get off and help out to the flat here. Help out to the flat because the wheels are already there. This is where it could be a game plan week. Will does a great job already getting to the area of taking away number two. He's already in the area taking it away. So that safety could kind of drop outside of two. So he's already in a position now to help out if one was to run this out route. He's in a great area. Our mic is working, working to help out the hybrid. Hybrid does a good job rerouting. This is a perfect example right here, guys. I love this. I love this right here. His eyes, right? I don't know how he's seen this dig coming, but he's in a perfect window. Whereas though he's not, he's in an area where a curl. Making sure he's taking his curl away if he were to go ahead and throw this dig. Because that out to the field is a long throw. That's a long throw. If he able to make that, I give kudos to him. I want to take that inside dig away, uh, helping us out. And he won't chase that all the way. He's going to get in the window just long enough to give the mic time to get there. Uh, then he'll go uh, rally to the flat. Good job right here by our backers. See our backers getting out. They do a really good job here reading their keys, knowing it's a pass, looking to match routes that come their way. We go here, three by one set. Where did we go this week? We went, okay, went cloud strong here. You can see our will, right? He read quarterback eyes, see where he's leveling off. There's no inside route. There's no dig. There's no slant. So he's just going to go ahead and zone off. Helping him out. That's a good, that's a good throw right there. Good throw by that quarterback right there. See right here at the top of the screen. Good job. Now, this is a great concept right here that Beloit ran. A hybrid, he doesn't have his eyes on one. He does not have his eyes on one because one now becomes a new number two. He should be in this window helping out in that, that, that little spot route. And now as the uh, mic is dropping, he's able to get in that window. Uh, forcing, you know, we want to take away that two ball. That's a big thing when our guys say, hey, even if we don't 
uh, get an interception. That's just getting a window so that way we can affect what type of throw it is. Uh, if it's a one ball, it's a completion. Uh, if it's a two ball, it's probably a completion. We want to try to make it a three ball. And what I mean by that is a one ball, fastball, two is kind of semi. Three means they got to put air to it. So anytime you run that vertical and they throw it to number one to the strong side, you see it's a lot of air uh, going over top. So I tell my guys, let's change the trajectory of the ball. Let's have an impact that way. So we might not get an interception, uh, but if it's a tip or if it's overthrown, our safety or, or, or corner is in a position to uh, make a play for us. Uh, okay. Let's see, we see what our mic's doing there. He kind of sent. Uh, I think it was fourth and eight here. So he's kind of, I always tell the guys, hey, ability to line, ability to line, get yourself out there. All right. I'll never be upset if a player is out there trying to make a play. That's the biggest thing I think uh, our players love about me is I'm going to allow them to have fun. I don't want to hand, handcuff them at all. I want these guys, they're out there making a play. Uh, and, you know, as long as they have an answer, say, hey, coach, it was fourth and eight. I want to kind of cheat out. I thought I could see this coming. Say, hey, all right, love it. Move on to the next play. Two by two set here. Got our strong safety working down. So this right here is a two to one. So now this became the new number one. Strong safety's in the window. Corner got uh, got peeking, looking back, looking back. See, I show all the film. I just don't want to show the good. I show everything. Same thing right here of our hybrid. He should be out there to the flat. Um, this is this, this was our young group right here. I uh, get some experience, but hey, we gotta learn. We gotta learn. A lot of this was this, this is overthrown. But just to show you, it's all about how you know if what you're teaching is working or showing up is when the young guys are out there and they're able to still execute just as if your ones were out there. So you kind of see our will. He knows he's working on his 45. Uh, The mic here, he should be dropping. Uh, There's no reach steps there. He should just go ahead and drop. He gets a high hat, but he comes up, uh, start to redirect. That's a good one. Okay. Yep, I remember this one here. So even with our, with our motion, uh, we'll get motion here by the bottom, by the slot receiver here. And this would be a good look at, at, at how we pass a lot of our routes here. Like I said, we won't ever chase anything under four yards. We're just going to rally to it. We're going to talk as we're looking to go up. Mike now, he got his head on the swivel. He sees he's coming under. He's going to pass it. The wheel's looking at collision, looking at help right here. Our free safety should be rotating middle. As you're looking to collide, he's going to level off. All right, yeah, in and in. Here's your, uh, a lot of people call it the cherry rice, the, the two or three yard drag. And now we just got to rally. We got to rally and make a tackle here now. Rally. So right here, we're in a, we're in a position to now, if he catches it, that's a two yard gain. Uh, it should be third and six, right? So we just got to get the ball down. Just got to get it down. Just got to get it down. So we we uh, this is the very first uh, first play of the game. Previous week, team hit us with a, with an RPO, so we kind of knew uh, that's kind of going to be the fat. If, if an offense sees something that you've been exposed with, they're going to try to come back. So as we're going to pattern match here now, we uh, I had our our Mike now. He was not going to be to the run because we knew the RPO was going to come anytime they put the tight end here. So he was going to hold, 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 and release late. He had a free gap where we mudded it up right there in the front. So he was going to hold, hold, hold. So if they did want to take that, which is correct, looks like he wants to do, we would have pattern match that route. I see our hybrid here. He does a good job. He's outside of two. You see the slant now? He's taking that away. Looks like they're blocking. There's number three out there. So our will now, he's he reads run, though. He gets the guard, tells him it's a run. The guard tells him it's a run. So he got to read his key. He got to go. He got to go. But we're in a window now. We're taking that away. Know where they can go. Know where they can go. This is why I say, I, this is really why I like the pattern and match where we're not just dropping to a spot. We're able to, whatever route com, combo you got, we're able to pass it along. But our players also know what routes to look for. Here you go. Here, another example, hybrid looking pattern match. This guy carries now too long, but he sees new number two, right? He sees his new rule. I would like him to level off 10 yards deep. He changed them all the way. I would like him to level it all. Same thing here with our will. He's looking. He's looking to see. He sees the in route. 
He's yelled pass, pass, pass. He should come off, but he's being a player. He sees quarterback rolling that way. Now he's got rally. That's why it's important for the hybrid to level off because if he levels off, he's able to uh, either force us to cut back or make an open field tackle. But since he's uh, 20 yards downfield, the quarterback uh, has some little wiggle room to make a play out there. So that's another one uh, for, for guys that face a lot of bubble teams. Uh, we face a lot of bubble teams. You can see this is an empty set here. You see how our, 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 our will. So the thing about spot drops, when you turn your head, you don't know what's coming. This is why I like pattern matching because we're able to react a lot faster. So they do throw a bubble. We can see the bubble coming. Let me go ahead and make a play. So if you watch our will right here, number 13, he senses two steps back. He sees the ball release. Now he's rallying, uh, ready to make a tackle here. Pattern match. Reading, get over there. Now let's get the guy down to the ground. Same thing about our Mike. Now he's not just dropping to an area. He's looking to pattern match. So he's able to see what the quarterback's doing before he just get out of there. So that was a big one. We knew facing this team, they were going to like to do a lot of bubble, uh, try to get us in, in space. They were pretty fast. Uh, so we wanted to eliminate as much space as we can. Uh, that was a huge reason why uh, I like pattern match as well. There's no space. There's no window. or should be no window, right? Uh, there's always different variations here. Um, huge right here. So this is right here is, is our is our force drill here. So now reading a robot all both drills in one. So he sees the play action, right? So he's reading through the guards to the running back. So if he reads the guard, he should see it's a hi hat. He sees the center is a hi hat. It's a, it should be a pass. But he realizes it late. He redirects, but he's looking to match patterns now. Let's imagine if he just was stayed here and he was able to complete this. But this is why I was talking about changing the trajectory of the ball. Now he can't throw a one. If it's a one, it's an interception. So I got to put a little error on it. But just that little error, incomplete. There's a huge component while we're able to match those patterns. Turn and run. She's able to change that ball. I, I gave my corners a hard time. It's like, hey, man, we did our job. The libraries did their job. Now we just got to be in a, in, in a vicinity to help make a play here. All right, so this is, this is great right here. Um, our rule. This is our rule. Hybrid here. Right, he's gonna to look to go two to one if there's no flat, right? So as of right now, there's no intermediate flat. He's behind the line of scrimmage under four yards. So we're gonna collide here, carry, carry, carry. So what he does wrong though, because he looks, he looks at the quarterback, he sees the ball thrown. He should just now stick his foot in the ground, come up, make a tackle. He gets caught, he has to turn around, and now he gotta make a tackle now. But he just got to know his eliminate that, that, that space that he's creating right there. Should have been a block in the back, didn't call it. It's all good. Let him play the next play. Because he's able to, now he does his job. He gives the Mike enough time. He does his good job. Now he should just be leveling off. Mike's in a window, matching a new number three. This is one, two, three. He does his job. Mike's there now, so he could come off a little sooner. Same thing with our will here. I would like our will on switch. It's a switch. All right, so he gets his head around to the quarterback too soon. He peaks, though, but he kind of sits where that guy is going. He uh, drop steps, open his left foot here, try to get in that window. Does a good job helping out on that scrub. So, like I said, our role here, we won't ever chase cheese. We won't ever chase cheese. We're going to level off. He does a good job. He eyes on two. Eyes, I'm sorry, hands on two, eyes on one. You see the dig coming. He gets in that area, trying to match that pattern. I would like our will to have a little more sense of urgency here. Try to reroute that guy, but he sees quarterback taking off. He's going to help us out there. Mike does a good job. Now he sees that this is the new number three. New number three here. He's in that window, so they do run that dig. Uh, hybrids pass it off to the mic. Here we go. There was one I definitely wanted to show. Uh, we'll get into our cover, cover two stuff in a little bit. But there was one that uh, had a great completion. Uh, it was for our player. Uh, if, his, if his nail was just an inch longer, he probably would have got a hand on it. Uh, but this right here, Mark Hogan, our, our hybrid here, does a really, really good job of uh, 
worked at his technique here. Does a really good job. Here he is, top of screen. Right here, reading to see. Okay, to get into their empty check, we make our empty call. He's looking curl, right? Hands on two, eyes on one. What does one do? One runs a hit. So he now knows I got to go. I got to go. He sees quarterback throws the ball. Now he just got to make a play, right? Now he just got to make a play. That receiver does a good job making a play. But this is the reason why we do it, right? Because if we were just a, a spot drop, he would just be here. He would catch it, and now you make him miss. Right here, I like my chances of now, hey, this could have been an interception. This could have been an interception because we're able to match patterns now. We're able to match patterns. All right, that's a good one. Um, go ahead and dive to our to our to our cover two. Uh, and our, our cover two is uh, very similar to our cover three as far as rules. Here we go. So now we know that our, our hybrid Mike and Will doesn't have to be a flat player because corners will be tied to the flat here. Uh, and we do our cover two probably a little different than some. Um, again, I hate covering green grass. So my corners now, they would stay on top until anything threatens the flat. They stay on top to anything threatens the flat. So if two is going straight to the flat now, he'll jump off of it, make a play. But if two and one go vertical, he's going to carry one, helping out on vertical threats here. Um, our, our hybrid and our will, they're both just our curl players. There are two. They're, they're, they're matching number two's route. There are curl players. Uh, the biggest thing here, too, is we're able to take away slants. I know when you spot drop, you're dropping 12 yards here, turn around, uh, and try to match quarterback eyes. Well, they run that slant. They're catching that right in front of you, making a play. Well, here, a hybrid won't open up and run. He's looking to pattern match. Once you get his pass key, eyes get on two, waiting to see what two does. If two runs a quick slant right now, I'm able to collide here and pass it off to the mic. That's another reason why I like pattern matching. Um, you kind of see here uh, what, what we asked our will to do is the tight end here. So he gets once he sees a pass, he goes vertical. He's going to try to wall him off reroute them and, and level off right there around that 10 yard mark um, helping out. Here's another diagram of how we do it. Uh, like I said, if there's two vertical corner will carry. Uh, he's looking, he's only going to carry to about 10 yards and he's going to level off. This is a great job passing this off. So if two goes off now, eyes two, right? Two, he becomes new number two. So anytime you get that dig route, he's the new number two. So it's important for our guys to not just get locked on the sand one, two, three, pre-snap, but knowing who's one, two, three, post-snap. You have to know that for us to be able to match these patterns. The dig route is new number two, so I'm able to collide here, level him off, get my eyes to the quarterback. Once they declare their route, quarter, we should be able to fully look at the quarterback, seeing what happens. You'll see a lot of times, once you collide on a receiver on a dig, he's going to give up. So you're in the window, they threw throw it, you should be in a vicinity to able to make a play, uh, have an impact. Uh, the way we run our cover two, sorry, make sure I cover this too. So our mic now, our mic's our two player here. He's our two, so it's kind of like your true tampa two here. So your free safety, strong safety, or your your uh, your deep half players, and your mic's your two. So how we run it with our mic now, if it's two by two, we're dropping to see if anything's vertical, right? We get vertical by anyone. We're going to open up to whatever side the quarterback looks to on two by two sets. If it's three by one, we're opening up to that number three side, seeing if uh, three's going to run a vertical or if they want to switch with number three and two. We got to carry with that. We got to help it out uh, with our free safety and strong safety down there, dividers. I'm a big uh, believer in dividers. So that way, if the mic does a good job by affecting it, if he changes the, the trajectory of the ball, safety should be in position to, to help the mic out uh, with us running that Tampa two. So here we go. Uh, this is about week three here. We ran, we ran our, our cover two here, third and 15. Uh, we kind of, it can be a draw. It can be a, a, a big screen down here. So we want to try to make sure we have flat controls here. But as you can see, the mic, he's reading three. He's looking to match three. So I don't like that right there. I don't like that stutter right here. I was just like him trying to collide. But he does a good job retracing his steps, getting his eyes around, and making a play. And making a play. The will here, I would like him to drop. Still a drop. <laughs> I know he doesn't. He got, he got three uh, to pass. 
Hybrid does a good job. You know, he's a curl player. He's a curl player, but he doesn't have his eyes. He should have kind of, he should have passed this off right here and gotten this window, but that guy was going to dig. But our Mike here does a really good job right here with our two, making a play here. Watch from this angle. Lead shoulder, turn and run, down to two, make a play. Another three by one set, another three by one. So we're pattern matching, right? So he's looking to see what's going to happen. So now he knows quick game, right? Quarterback got his, he, he got his shoulder like he's ready to throw it. So when we're able to pass it. He's going to be new number three. He's going to be new number two. So hybrid now is in the window, right? He's in the window. Corner does a good job rerouting, so they're both here, third and eight. If he wasn't catching or deflection, we're in our window. But the Mike here, he knows, hey, this guy can now be the – he can be a vertical. I got to help my guys out. I got to help him out. I got to be able to help him out. I'm a two player. Mike does a really good job seeing the switch. Here we go down the goal line. We still ran it. We know it's third and four. Uh, two by two set here. Will does a good job. See him open up, lead shoulder, not turning runner. Good. Level off. There's nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Every route's matched up. Every route's matched up. I would like the corner to come off, go out there in the flat. We're all, we're, we're taking away the routes. We're taking away routes. The biggest thing we got to do is take away routes. This is awesome here. So you did a good job colliding. This is a line of scrimmage, so we won't chase it. We'll just rally. Get it. Uh, fourth and seven, we're off the field. Another reason why we won't ever chase the cheese here. Mike does a good job opening up the three. Will does a good job here. Perifio seeing it come over. He got to match that route now. Corny out under, 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 under. We won't ever chase that. We won't ever chase it. Keep it in front of us. Make a play. Make a play. Make a play. Ball going, reacting to it. Good. Good job. He sees it coming now. This is what I was talking about, the 2-3 zone. Bring back good memories here. He sees it coming. I'm in my, he's in my zone. I basically got him in man until I pass him to the next zone. Perfect here. So this is sprint out rule. So that's kind of what I was uh, talking about. Uh, so we do our sprint outs different here. So since we're in our cover two package here, uh, our Mike is going to put pressure on. Mike's going to put pressure on. Uh, he's going to be our intermediate player. He's going to be our flat player. So with a lot of sprint outs, there's always going to be intermediate and deep. So if it's a flood, if it's a smash, if it's a spot concept, there's usually a guy in that area. So our cover two, he's our deep player, intermediate, flat. So now we know, hey, anything that comes to the flat, I got to take it. So corner knows. Flat's coming. I got to take it. Now the hybrid got to know I got to take intermediate. This guy's running a sell or if he's running a stop, I got to get my butt over there. He got anything deep. Corner, man. See, DBs owe me. They owe me a couple. They owe me a couple of interceptions. They were getting that way, getting that window. So uh, I'll, I'll go through one more, open it up for questions. I, I can go on and on. Uh, about what we do with our drops, uh, but I definitely want to give enough time uh, for, for questions too. So we go to our last one, just reading screens here. Another way to, I think if you spot drop, you cannot recognize screens or bubbles with your pattern match. You're able to see it declare. You can see it happens real fast, getting in the way. Now he's got to make a tackle now, get that guy down. But we're able to see with our drops, we're able to take stuff a lot away. Perfect, awesome. So. But I um, appreciate it. Uh, hopefully that was, that was very helpful um, with a lot of information. I could send it uh, to, to anybody that want to look at it more in depth, what we're doing. Um, this is, you know, hopefully it's very helpful. I know, you know, there's some, some uh, stuff in it that maybe a, a lot of high school or, or, you know, maybe at your level you can't do it. Uh, so I definitely understand that. I hope you took one thing from it. Uh, biggest thing for me is try to expand this game and give back. I've been a lot of great coaches. Uh, that's where a lot of my philosophy comes from. Uh, so, that's, you know, some of the things that we do. But uh, I'm, I'm an advocate for the game. 
So if any way I can help a young coach or a new coach that's getting into the profession that wants to know more about zone drop, uh, or if somebody just wants to know about zone drop or know about defense, uh, four two five, uh, I'm here to just help uh, in any capacity I can. So uh, Nate, I want to thank you, uh, Chief Pickskin. You guys do an amazing job. Uh, I'm always looking to see if you're posting uh, new material because I'm always looking to see what can I add to my tool belt. Uh, but I definitely want to say thank you for that. And uh, thank you for Coach Aubrey allowing me uh, to be in a position to where I'm able to help young men, uh, but also help other coaches as well. All right, Coach. Man, I had a blast with that. That was, uh, man, a ton of good information. I've got an entire page filled of notes. Um, and it. yeah, love yeah, all, all sorts of good quotable stuff. And that's what – so I, I actually love with, with when I'm coaching linebackers and – Probably linebackers, honestly, are my favorite thing in the world to coach. I mean, my single favorite thing in the world to coach are linebackers. Um, And I'm big on quotables. It's like I want to go to practice and just kind of – I want to be able to say things that I know they're going to remember, right? Like, so so I just wrote down also – I love that you're forcing three balls. I thought that's like a huge note. Like, I know that you're – I'm thinking that before. You know, so this – and I might be sidetracked here for a moment, but – No, you're good. We gave up a couple. This was about 15, 2015, uh, 2016, actually. We gave up a couple huge third and 10 conversions. And it was because my linebacker was there. But they're, they're just running like a 10-yard stop with a tight end. My linebacker's there, but he's over the route instead of under the route. Right? Gotcha. Like, like uh, and, and here I am in the middle of the game trying to explain to a linebacker, listen, listen, I got a safety behind you that's over the route. I need you to be under the route, right? And so I'm trying to right. coach this in the middle of the game. And, and, of course, for me, I'm going, that's the last time I'll make that mistake. I, I have to make sure my <laughs> linebackers understand they're under, right, that 10-yard stop. They're not over that 10-yard stop. That, that's someone else's job. So um, that's just a little side note. As, I, as I'm looking at, hey, that's your job to force that ball to go over your head, force them to right. put it in that window. Okay, a couple quick questions. One was you talked about in your very first slide, like this hook shuffle. Um, mm-hmm. Was that the right terminology? Tell me yes, more about so hook shuffle. What, sh- what? Tell me more about what hook shuffle means and who who that's talking to. Gotcha. So your hook shuffle is mainly for your your, your mic and will. So what I like, I, I don't want our guys to cross over, and I know that they sometimes they will do because when you kind of cross over, you kind of uh, can stumble over your feet. So I want to make sure we're kind of always uh, shoulders whip so if we're shuffling we're able to turn shuffle shuffle or at least step. so that way if it's a run i'm able to react that way or as a pass i'm able to stick my my inside foot able to get out there pass so uh some of which our linebackers work it i gotta do a better job keep uh emphasizing and reiterating to our guys but that's basically our hook shuffle and we're able to do that in a 92 so the ball is going lateral we're able to shuffle there uh if the team's running maybe like a, a power read maybe just shuffle down i want to try to avoid any type of crossover uh run if i if i'm able to so uh, that's basically and that's why i say about a lead shoulder so depending on if it's a runner pass your lead shoulder could be an inside or it could be an outside that's taking you to where uh the chance of where the ball is going to be Okay, awesome. I was looking for clarification on that. I like that a ton. Now, the second question is, um, how often or how? So one question that comes up on our staff a lot is how much can our kids learn? How how much? How much? How much? So for these linebackers, you know, I'm looking at that mic and his rule is very consistently three to two, (laughs) right? Three to two, very consistently. You're... um, I can't remember what you called them, that safety that was dropping down. Or no, safety, yep. Or maybe, maybe it was that H... Where his rule is very, rate. yeah, his his rule is very consistently two to one. How yes. often in in your coverages are you going to run different coverages? And you're at the college level, so I'm assuming you're going to run probably a few more coverages than we would. How often do those linebackers have exceptions to their rules of three to two or two to one? How often do you, um, or or <laughs> if you're putting a different coverage in, do they have or their <laughs> rules are consistent? Uh, that's that's a great question. Um, so I, I would say is, is that, that could be a game plan week. So like when I was giving you an example of uh, this week, we just manned up the backside receiver. We manned up the running back. So that's a game plan. So that's like an extension of the playbook. But from day one, we won't get there. That's kind of one. Once we master what I've asked those guys to do, now I can say, hey, let's move on to a little bit of algebra. So let's master, you know, uh, add this attraction and division and multiplying before we get there. So we, we got to constantly work that. 
Um, but yeah, I try to keep it as simple as possible for our guys because we're already at a disadvantage for the defense. It's an offensive game. You know, anytime pass interference, uh, especially with the RPO coming five yards downfield. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of disadvantages to our game. So I want them to be simple and play fast. If we're able to do that, we can line up and be simple and play fast, then they're already, they're already reacting. So I want to make sure that they're reacting a lot faster. I don't want to slow them down. So that's why you can see a lot of our rules. It's a lot of carryover from cover three to cover two. A lot of that's carryover. And then even when we get to our cover four game, it's a lot of carryover to it. Uh, so, and then, you know, when I tie into our fire zone pressures, so now that I show you the first clip, we're just now, instead of having a, a, a true flat player, we just got a curl player, you know. So now instead of two to one, I'm a two player, I'm matching that. So everything uh, got to be an extension of what you want to do. So that's why I want to try everything, you know, the playbook, and everything falls under that umbrella. Awesome, man. All right, one last question for you, then we'll, we'll call it a day and I'll sign us off. Okay. Um, so when it comes to rerouting, I'm a huge yes. fan of rerouting. However, for myself, I've struggled with um, maybe practicing it correctly. We've struggled to practice it well. I've struggled with some young linebackers. You know, co- As I want them rerouting, what they yeah. end up doing is maybe chasing a route too much, right? Now, <laughs> now they're chasing that under, as you say, don't chase the cheese, right? So it's that delicate balance of, okay, yeah, I want you to reroute it when possible, but at the same time, you can't. You can't chase this one guy everywhere, right? It's not a man-to-man defense. So, right. um, how often do you do you uh, are you guys practicing rerouting? How much of a priority is rerouting? Gotcha. And how do you balance that? Not reroute it, but don't chase it to where you don't need to be. Perfect. So uh, we do it every day. Uh, I'm a believer, and if you want to be great at something, you got to do it every day. And uh, I give credit to uh, Coach uh, Pat Fitzgerald and Northwestern staff. I've been able to come up there for a couple of spring ball practice. And this is where I got it from. They actually have a period just dedicated to their reroute. So their receivers are trying to avoid the reroute and their linebackers and safeties are dropping to their spot and trying to reroute, trying to get in their area and try to reroute. So we will do that every day. It'll be part of one of our circuits. I'm a big believer in turnover circuit, tackle circuit, and now reroute circuit. So um, we'll have different stations and they'll come to my station. We're just working on reroute. We just got our guys coming down. We want to collide. And that's where you can eliminate guys chasing. So now they just know, hey, coach just really want me to get my hands on them. And then if he leaves my area, pass it off to something else. So we're going to work that every day, uh, depending on what – well, we're going to work it every day. Uh, now the time might depend. Some days it might be five minutes. Some days it may be long. It just depends on where you're at as a, as a team. You know, day one might be different than day 10. Day one you might spend a little more time coaching them through it, and then day 10, you know your guys got it, they're getting it, and now we're getting uh, out of it more to something else. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate it. Well, before I sign us off here, you got anything else to add? Gotcha. So I just want to make sure uh, that that I, I got my right Twitter this time. I know last time we talked, I gave you the wrong Twitter. Uh, but uh, if, you know, you like what you heard, uh, if you want to get in contact with me, uh, my Twitter handle is uh, at Coach Watkins, C-U-C. Uh, anytime, uh, don't hesitate, reach out to you. Always got my phone on me. Uh, and as far as, you know, if you want to, uh, get in contact with me, call, talk, uh, my cell phone number is 319-930-5507. So, uh, I'm here to help. I'm a, a open book. Uh, we got a lot of free time right now. So, uh, the more and more I could talk ball, my girlfriend might not like that, <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, I could balance it out hopefully. <laughs> Well, Coach, thank you so much for joining us. All of you guys at home, thanks for joining us and checking in. Um, Be sure to check out Chief Pigskin, the online clinic at clinic.chiefpigskin.com. And like and subscribe below. Please do that and help us out. Appreciate all you football lovers. We'll be catching up with you guys soon.